the only, I mean, you could, like I said, you could go for a variance to the ZBA, but you need to show hardship for a variance. You don't have hardship, it's self-imposed. Mm -hmm. You have an option is the other thing that, that the ZBA looks at. What else can they do? Well, they can go TDR. How much TDR do you need? It's about ten. It's about ninety-five hundred dollars an acre for TDR. So if you needed, I don't know, how two much or three acres. acres. If you needed two or three acres, that, that's like thirty. Say nine. Say you need three acres. That's like thirty twenty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah, but the formula doesn't work that way. It's per number of spaces per you, need, you need. Oh, per number of spaces. That's right. Not not number of parking. So yeah, that's right. That's right. It'd be a lot more than that. And. That only allows us to reduce it to 1.5. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Rather so than two times. Rather than 1. two 5. times. So that might not <coughs> do it either. You know. Um, well, that tells you how many square feet you need, but that how do you relate that to the number of parking spaces? There is a chart yeah, in the bylaw. Oh, there's a okay. chart in the bylaw. Yes. You're right. Um, you know, I. So if you're acres shy of parking, you're right. It'll it would cost a lot, way more than it's probably worth. Because one acre gives you 20 parking spaces, and it, there's actually a chart here for number of parking spaces. I think that's uh, 20 spaces, well, is roughly 4,000 okay. square feet. So yeah, you're. What what is the more important building here for your plans? The four-story one, or is it? I guess the answer would be yes there, but I'm not, just not sure if it makes sense to honestly do the project. There's so much land there, and just putting a footprint building of either 18,000 or 24,000 on four acres well, doesn't. Well, you know, the other option is to uh, get, draft the draft the change to the bylaw and present it to us. And uh, we've had this problem before with commercial properties. Clearly, you don't need the parking. And yeah. we're hindering business development here. Joseph Grotting's point is a good one, but I doubt this is going to be a place where you're going to be putting restaurants or bars. But, but the but, bylaw is the bylaw. But the bylaw, so yeah, my point is you get, draft up an amendment to the bylaw, we'll take a look at it, and if it's reasonable, I'd certainly vote to make it a town is, meeting. Do we present that to the planning board or the select board? Stand here. Bring it here first. Let's start here. Yeah. I mean, get some quick numbers, and I think based upon the total square footage that we have there. Uh, yeah, give them, give yeah. them a call. We, we need like 1,058 parking spaces. Uh, this pie chart shows our busiest day. 30 cars. So. And they're not all there at one time, are they? No, okay. they come and go. They're there for an average of 17 minutes. And that's, I, I have no reason to doubt that, but as Jimmy uh -huh. said, the bylaw is the bylaw. Okay. So the only way to get around it is to change the bylaw and then to somehow address this issue when it comes to commercial property, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly development and housing is moving up South Maple Street. It just seems that one size fits all. So that's true. That is how the bylaw is written. Yeah. So we don't have any, we don't have any discretion on that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it would require a change to the bylaw to amend that. Which I don't think anyone would necessarily oppose. It, you know, depending on how it's drafted. Yeah. yeah. So we should. So you got. Do who, who, who do you who? You have an attorney. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. You've got to have an attorney with the size of your business. Talk to your attorney. Mm -hmm. Are they? They're obviously like a, like a probate attorney, a land attorney, real estate attorney. Well, land, land, you know, probate land attorney typically knows more than somebody that's like defense attorney, if you would, on, on this kind of a topic. You need to talk to somebody mm -hmm. either in your lawyer, in your attorney specifically, or in their office who's familiar with zone bylaws and how would you, how could it be worded to um, make this fit without giving everybody a carte blanche mm -hmm. down the road. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be, a, it's not that we were against what you want to do, 
is, is the idea that we don't want to give the planning board authority to just waive the parking because that's not right. We're going to have to word the bylaw yeah. where it's specific to a use or some couple of uses, and you don't have to comply. You've got to comply a minimum amount of parking. And then, we, and then with the, you have some kind of a deed restriction on the land, all kind of other good things that if it's ever changed, then, you know, it, it, it's, you, you understand where I'm coming from, right? Yeah. Okay. So, talk to the attorney and what? then he sh well, he'll probably know. When did you want to start building? I'm sorry? When did you want to start building? March of 2020. March of 2020. Well, we got a town meeting coming up. I don't know. Well, if no, it's just... Is the bullet, he, he won't. He won't make it to the ball. No. Okay. no. To to change the bylaw with just a single person involved, uh, it's difficult. You perhaps should bring a rough draft to the planning board, and maybe there's some other corrections we can say. We're going to make a wholesale change to our parking overall in the town, and that would probably have a, a better chance of passing. And it would make sense from a planning board perspective. Because if all of a sudden you go to the town meeting and get special favor, then obviously we have to no one's looking for a special favor. It would have to be by category, right. like warehousing and manufacturing yeah, exactly. in the is, industrial this is, this district. Is whole, this, right. is, this is this is not yeah. retail. The bylaws like, no, 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 retail. No, 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 no. I understand and, that. We're not looking to have an exemption for sure. this particular no. business as much no. as like Joe said, like a category, exactly. I think you're on the same page. That's so we're we're talking the same general language here mm -hmm. talk to you know get your attorney and you know even get some ideas and even if you wanted to call bill or myself you could talk a little bit maybe you know, only you know, like one-on-one -on -one or something mm -hmm. and just kind of well put some ideas talk some some talk going back and forth between maybe the attorney and us to see what we're talking about we, we're on the same page how so. many storage businesses warehouses are in Havley, for instance your, yours, four, four, three stories is what's the limit now? Fifty feet. Fifty feet. And these are short buildings. Okay. So, but there's also an industrial zone. So, so we're talking about the town meeting. If we don't make the town meeting, what is the next? Mean? What is made? Uh -huh. And that's what it would take to. Get accomplished what you're kind of talking yeah, to, about. to change the bylaw requires a town meeting approval mm -hmm. two-thirds majority not to say you couldn't start building <laughs> well at, risk. So, at, at, at your own risk the other, no no <laughs> that would not that, that would not go not be a good idea the other thing to bear in mind for your design of your building is we are actively considering a definition of height that will go to the highest point of the structure You'll probably have a flat roof on this because it's in the industrial district. So, yep. If it, we expected that. That's an issue if you have a peaked roof. Uh, yeah. We have not addressed that directly, but we will be going forward. So, peaked roofs will, have, will also be subject to the highest point. But it doesn't include, like, if you had air conditioner, you No, no, no. It, it doesn't include it, like, or a cupola. This is the actual peak of the roof. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the point that on a peak roof, mm -hmm. and the elevator shack goes up. Right, and on and on a uh, flat roof would be something <laughs> like you know normally it's the, it's the top level of the beam. So if you got a uh, parapet walking around it, it wouldn't include the height of the parapet, unless the parapet was for some reason super high. Then you know be a different story. Most parapets are like three or four feet that we've seen. Can I ask one more question? So it's a commercial use, but it's a subcategory what for for a storage yeah. building? That any you're, wholesale or retail business kind of category subcategory? You're, you're in an industrial zone right here. Yeah. So you're considered you're considered a business use in an industrial zone, which is a permitted use. We so were looking is it a consumer cable service, it's like a warehouse, or or service, or service, and it with no. Nothing I guess, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not which, sure what your question is. Which of these categories under commercial retail are we? This one, this one. Where have, we don't know which you're in subcategory. It all has the same. You're warehousing. You're, 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 you're warehousing in the industrial zone. So that's this? 
that would that would be a, what, why what I guess I'm not sure what 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 else what, yeah what what the question is our attorney was thinking that his attorney was thinking it was this any wholesale retail business service or public utility it would probably fit into that but since you have a category for warehousing yeah. Sounds like that'd be better for changing the parking requirements if we were a warehouse. If you could not call a it a warehouse, yes. Yeah. Not a retail. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what, what the big deal is. I mean, whether you're considered a warehouse or service, I mean, what? I'm, I'm not sure why they're, why it's a concern. So what was the lawyers thinking? Yeah, I don't know why, why. They just want to know what category, I guess. I don't know, but it's. Pretty much a moot point, isn't it? Because right yeah. now the parking is the same no matter yeah, the, what. Yeah, the, 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 nothing much changes no matter what the what the what the use is because you're in an industrial zone. So you could, for this particular use, you could kind of well, I'm an industrial zone, so any business use or almost any industrial use fits in there. So, okay. and it, we it's don't not, really. It's not like if we don't well, right? reach out and say this particular. Yeah, it, it really doesn't want us. To it doesn't it. change any. Uh, requirement as far as zoning goes that the height it doesn't matter what it is if you're an industrial district this is your height limitation um, whether you're a warehouse or uh -huh. um, a restaurant yeah and I'm not sure he was asking so height limitation I think he was just wanting to know so actually it would be helpful to know which category yeah. warehousing is not allowed in the business district it's only allowed in the industrial right. district so that's probably why you want to be warehousing I mean, you're both, in the industrial both, district. Both, both of your businesses are in the industrial zone. Mm -hmm. are, are there? But as you see, it doesn't matter which category. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they could they could pick one and say this is where we are, but it, 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 you're you're a permitted use in a permitted zone, no matter which one you pick. That's what we look at. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, no, actually, Brad, why don't you take those back? Because we can't do anything with them yeah, right now. Right now. Thank you. Okay. Harry Auerbach, Magnolia Sign. So I'm here on behalf of Five Guys. Is that like Brad Auerbach? My uncle. Ooh, really? No. <laughs> I, was I, 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 I used to ask for your autograph. I used to tell people I used to sit on Uncle, Bill, Uncle like Bill's uh, knee, but it, it didn't go far because I, I can't lie. I did meet him once. I was six years old. Was at West Springfield and went up to him at halftime. My father says, "Go say hello." And I went to say hello, and he said, "I said my last name is Howard." He goes, "So." <laughs> Ruin me for life. So, um, Five Guys is seeking permission to put a halo lit. Please go ahead. No, no. Uh, a halo lit sign. They're located at 355, Darren. 355 Russell Russell Street. Give me an open. What? When are they going to open? Very I have soon. no idea how many times I get asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we pour concrete on uh, Thursday, so and the framing will start. So I'm saying about six to eight weeks from now. Okay. So we're in, right in the middle of it. So uh, they're looking for permission to put a halo lit, which is an internally lit sign, on the building. Internally lit? Yes. Or, or, or backlit. What, what back, is back, Sorry. What, internally or backlit? The light shines. There's shine, a difference. Right. So a halo lit letter shines light backwards. And, and, and the, the sign is opaque and cannot be seen through it. The sign is opaque and cannot be seen so through it. So the back of the sign is illuminated. The, the, the background be of the sign is illuminated and it looks like uh, the letters are on the same page. So, so the face is solid. Correct. There's no light emanating from the right. face. That's what we we call it a fabricated letter. The back is made of clear acrylic and LEDs, yep. very efficient. Shine backwards. Yep. There's a glowing. There's a glow effect, but there's not a lot of ambient light. That's that's okay. what we want. Yeah. Now, the only question comment we're going to make on that is, can the, is the light adjustable? It, we can we can make it adjustable. The, the only reason I say that right. some, sometimes the, tr if the backlit signs come out to be so bright, right, that the, they're, they're 
uh, a nuisance to the surrounding area. If this Monica can be dimmed to right. some extent so that it satisfies your need and or some the people from you know the public from being an obnoxious, then it's okay. And, and Darren, correct me. The, the background of this, the, the brick is of what color? Design? The brick's gray. Yeah. It's the new building out in right. front of Walmart, obviously. Right, so it won't be... Uh, <clears throat> I thought you were going to be between Lincoln Grill and LLB. LLB. We are. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so adjustable, we can we can make sure. Yeah, we so can also... So it's not a white background. It's a, it's a grayish, dark, gray. gray, gray, gray. Right, gray. right. So, okay. you, you know, that's another way. And again, it's... it's uh, Darren, is it is the brick... Uh, I don't... Do you guys want to see a... a picture on my phone of the sure. building. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if that'll help you. Well, yeah. and I mean, I, I go by there, but I never really paid attention to the background. So the that's the building. Okay, so it is like a... So it's like a grayish, reddish, darker... So the sign's going to be up there? Yeah, we're going to... Whoa, oh, sorry That would that. be my brother. Um, so it would be one sign on the front of the building. That's yeah. it. Nothing in the middle, in between the two buildings, the alleyway, and nothing at the back of the building, just... One on the sign. front. One sign. And that sign is roughly it's uh, 20, it's 20 foot 7 by 2 foot 6. six of, of individual yeah. letters, 50, right? 50 square feet. 50 square feet. So it should be 40 square feet on a multi-tenant building. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So I need to, re I need to resize this to a 40 square feet. Square. 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 Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. Anybody else want to see that? Yeah. And Darren, the, the, the brick yeah, is it's it's smooth. It's smooth. Okay. It's smooth brick. You can see on the to die. Uh, yeah, you can, see, you can see on the picture there that it is a smooth, smooth face. So it's not going to be weird and and rugged okay. um, as as the other building is next door. So okay. No other lighting uh, like over the windows. Uh, that many restaurants have a tendency to. There's, there's not going to be any what we call gooseneck lighting. Uh, no, I mean they, the Five Guys does have a couple of like an open sign in the window, hangs in the window, and a milkshake sign that hangs in the window. It's inside the building, but hangs in the window. How big? Uh, I mean, I don't, didn't measure them exactly, but they're only about both about this big. They're not very big. I definitely could get and provide dimensions and specs if you need them on those two things. And gentlemen, um, since we need to be 40 square feet, the, the process of, do we resubmit to Tim? Do we come back before the board? We, we, we will give you, more than likely, give you an approval tonight with limitation of 40 <coughs> square feet. Then you go to Tim and, and we're good to go. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Does the um, milkshake sign and the open sign need to be included in the 40 square feet, or is that considered Those separate? Those are informational signs. So we're good with that? The, 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 the open sign is informational. Okay. And the one in the window, you, you, you're talking about the, oh, the milkshake sign. Yeah, it's just, it says milkshakes on it, is all it says. Just is it lit? Much. It, it is lit. It is inter it's lit. Both of them are lit. Well, the open sign would be, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're both lit. It is addressed in the bylaw, but I think that as long as I don't think it counts towards the 40 feet. Yeah. Right. Okay. Maybe right. take a look. I just wanted to make sure because we do have those two signs that will be lit through a you know an outlet inside the building. And I do actually, I, I forgot, I do have the plans here. I could pull up the ex exact dimensions on those if you wanted to see what they look like, but I don't know the plan. Okay. The question, uh, question is, how much control do we have over signs that are inside the building? I think there's... Yeah, yeah. That's, just, that, that, that's one thing that we're kind of... Yeah. Oh, here, here. Yeah. As long as it doesn't exceed six square feet, Oh, it does. neither of them do. You yeah. can have a signs behind an exterior separate. facing window, yeah. which aggregate display surface on any one sign does not exceed six square feet, not illuminated past 10 p.m. local time or 30 minutes after the close of the business. No more than two of such signs would be allowed for business. So we get two, two of those. Two of those. Okay, so, so we'll have a one shake and one of those shake. Students. Okay, so that works. The, the and they're both very small. They're both only about, you know, two feet by a foot, so they're not. 
take it all. Away. So what I have to do is I have to. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the halo lit sign not to exceed 40 square feet. Second. Any other discussion? Hmm? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes by zero. Mr. Callan, when uh, Texas Roadhouse opened, apparently they brought a bunch of so-called certificates to town hall. The appropriate body to deliver those to is this one. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> you didn't say that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he said it after the motion passed. <laughs> <back. laughs> when, when, when Texas Roadhouse didn't open, we'll make sure you get we some didn't catch it on, We didn't catch it on their plan, but the whole top of the building was illuminated yeah. with, like a, with lights. Right, and, then and exactly. it was so bright that the neighbors half a mile away were complaining, and it, was, it, it lit up route, literally lit up the front of Route Nine as you drive by it. And we went back to them; they came back in for something. We explained to them, and they dimmed them all down. And yeah, it's still illuminated, and it still meets their need pretty much, but it's a lot better, and it's not as obtrusive as it was before. We had the same, same issue in Northampton, and, and we just. It, he'll have control of the lights as far as how bright and how dim, right. and I'll have control of them on a timer, so they'll automatically go off at ten o'clock with our with our timer. Are you putting a fire? Are you the manager or something? Place? No, I'm the GC, general contractor. Oh, okay. We're just assigned. Oh, but just assigned. Um, is there I, five guys in Northampton? No, no, I don't know. The nearest, the three nearest no. five guys in Hoyle. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, so the people that own this this section, I think the nearest one they own is actually. Worcester. Really? Yeah. yeah. So the area is broken up into. I, I bet sections. I get asked several times a week, and I'm not exaggerating one bit. When is Five Guys going to open? <laughs> we are doing our darndest. I promise. <laughs> they are. Because, I mean, I was asked today by two different people. Not too quick, because I got to build the site. Yeah. Right. So, not too quick. And, uh, it, it, it'll be about six, six to eight weeks. Like I said, we're pouring concrete so on. Like the end of November. Right on Thursday. Yeah, I'd say right around Thanksgiving. We'll probably open up for Christmas. Shopping right then. You think I'm a great, turkey. great turkey burger, right? Yeah. <laughs> no turkey burgers there. <laughs> may I right. give, is, is there one of these that I may give to what the students? Uh, is there an extra one? I know you gave those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. They don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't want to give you the extra Thank you very much. Awesome. Talking about Red Art back in my youth. Yes. Bob Cousy, Seth Sanders, <laughs> Sam Jones all came to have me to speak at the sports night over there. Really? Oh, yeah. Tanya Stratton was here. And his grandson is. All right. Yeah, thank you. Again, thank you. Thank you much, gentlemen. Uh, uh, Jim is. Mr. Reiser. I have a lot of stuff. So if you're willing to, I don't know what you're, what you got on the schedule, but I'm, it's going to take a while. Okay, let's take you at the end. Let's talk to the few we have left, and then we can get to you after we talk to uh, That's fine. Ken. Okay. Okay. Um, Amir. Yes. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm here uh, uh, regarding the the property at 216 Russell Street, which is next to uh, Auto Express. <coughs> Uh, initially, we wanted to have a car wash, but for time being, you know, we have you no. Know, uh, we are waiting for that. Meanwhile, there are two office space here, commercial office space, and I want to make a pavement pavement for them and few parking lot. The bridge design came up with this, so it is just you know few parking space and just putting the black top there and. Tim asked me to present. So to you him. don't own those buildings? Yeah, I do. Oh, you own those buildings? Yes, now. yes. I do. I own other Express, this lot, which is empty now. Okay. And this one. And we wanted to make it just a small pavement here. Because right now it is the what you call crush rock, and it's not good for winter. The tenant asked that, you know, they would be, we would put the black top. So it's already parking lot, but yes. you want to put a hard surface exactly. on it. I believe one of those went through site plan approval and we something and they had the parking required. Right, I think they had the required parking. I think we waived site plan approval because there were no exterior alterations. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, just as with the guy who put in the motorcycle dealership or motorcycle sales, if he's putting down pavement, you're changing drainage. So we are doing this as minimal as possible because uh, 
we are going to have some development later on. So this is as minimum as possible. To just have a, uh, some uh, safe parking for them. That's all. So, so what is the intent to put a car wash where? No, 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 no. Not it was intended in the beginning, but for now I'm just uh, holding it off till I would decide. But for these tenants. There are two commercial, uh, there are two tenants here. Yeah. Or two, uh, my wife, nutritionist, and the uh, psychiatrist here. And there is Earth, Earth something, I forgot that. But they do solar. And uh, they pay, I paid them for them, but you know, they were asking if they could have the uh, so light What you're outlining as parking is presently exactly. gravel. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, so I think we have to have something. You, you said Berkshire Design yes. did that for you. Yes. I think um, if hypothetically, if, if we had a letter from Berkshire Design okay. stamped by a professional engineer saying that the there would be no okay. drainage impact the off the property the or onto Route 9. Okay. That might be enough to give yeah, us a basis for waiving. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What was, what was formerly in the middle? Anything? It was a. Uh, there was a house here. Okay. Yeah. Which I basically we demolished it and we built another one. We actually we moved this. It was here. We moved it here. And cause excavation is going to do the job. So I think we can get a letter to that effect from that Berkshire. we could from Berkshire sure. with professional engineers stamp yes. that we can um, we consider voting to waive further site plan approval if there will be no impact off site and you own yeah the abutting properties. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Mr. Kim. You got some students here? Yep. Three days uh, studying. Great. Does everyone have copies? Um, yeah, we're going to talk about definitions. What I sent out on Friday? Yep. I did not get a chance to print out any. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. I can look over your shoulder. Okay. As you know, um, there's th there has been a working group working on the MS4 stormwater requirements, which included, um, which includes the chair of the planning board, uh, conservation staff, DPW director, and the building inspector, um, as well as myself and uh, Patty Gambarini from PVPC, who is our um, senior environmental planner. Um, and uh, this is a culmination of work for the most part of the, um, of the uh, to basically create a uh, stormwater management and erosion sediment control bylaw to conform with the MS4 requirements, which will um, be required by July 1st, 2020. Um, so, through the four meetings that we, I think it's probably more, um, through the many meetings that we've had with the working group, um, presented to you is um, a plan for a town general bylaw 
as well as a set of regulations that will be adopted by the planning board um, eventually after the bylaw is hopefully adopted, um, which also would require a repeal or rescission of the zoning bylaw which addresses stormwater um, management. Amendment to it. Correct. Right. right. Um, so with that said, um, the, the model that many of the towns use, and this is based on a model from the town of Spencer, um, is specific to um, having a bare bones bylaw, um, purpose, definitions, applicability, the administration of the bylaw, um, how you enforce it, and um, the severability. Um, so that is what exists with your general bylaw here. Um, and then there is a, a companion stormwater regulation, uh, which is has a lot more information um, that is a draft at, at this point, uh, and basically gives the standards to which um, developers would have to demonstrate um, when they come before either the board, the planning board, or the conservation commission. Um, for their stormwater permits. Uh, so I don't know, maybe Jim, if you wanted to add to that. Just uh, explain a little bit about it. The the idea behind this is that, and I talked to Joel Bryce this afternoon, right. and I forwarded him this bylaw and the regulations, and I asked him what we've been talking about, how do we reference the zone bylaw to the general bylaw and still not be in conflict with the two thirds one simple majority vote? And he says, I think there's a way to do that. He's, I'm pretty sure there's a way to do that. He's supposed to get me wording Great. on how to do that. So hopefully they'll take care of that. Um, I'm not sure, you know, the zone bylaw has some various things in there that we may still keep. I'll let Joe kind of give some guidance on that. Okay. But anyways, and the general bylaw, just so everybody's aware, is, is fairly, seven pages, probably eight pages printed a little bit bigger. The regulations that the planning board will need to adopt to address this bylaw, because this is very, like Ken said, pretty bare bones and simple, is 32 pages long. It is, this is one complicated bylaw. Whether it's a zone or general, it is complicated. I'm not gonna make any light thing about that. It is a bear. How, how is it possible to be compliant with this bylaw if you're in, in business? It would, would require um, inspections. So yes. the DPW, um, the applicants that would come before the board with new development or expansion of development greater or equal to 40,000 square feet would require a stormwater permit. Um, so, for instance, if that um, uh, proposed development were to come through um, with the storage units, let's say, they would need to come in with a stormwater, you know, to address the stormwater, which would include an operations and maintenance plan, um, erosion control, uh, you know, a plan for that, as well as um, some other components that are required by this EPA permit. Um, this is all driven by EPA, federal EPA and DEP. This is not something that we don't like it, we don't have to do it. We don't have that option. Under section one, B6, it says provide stormwater water facilities that are attractive. Who makes that determination if something's attractive? Which document? Which one? Like, which on section one, <laughs> the on the proper management of stormwater runoff will meet the following criteria. The regulation one? The one that I The one that The one that I know. The one that I know. The one that I know. The one that one I'm with you, Mike. But what? Yeah. B6. B6. Who makes one B6? Yeah. Who makes the determination as to whether something's attractive? Well, that would be your peer reviewers. Um, I mean, this is coming. So this is coming from your zoning bylaw. Um, 
Well, Spencer's zoning bylaw. Mm -mm. This is ours. Yeah, this is yours. the word of truck yeah. in there. Um, I use Spencer as a model to oh, okay. to structure the bylaw, but nothing from Spencer's, none of the words from no, the Spencer text. bylaw was was transferred to this one. Um, but I would have answered. Somebody change that word. I mean, a tractor is. It's, a, it's in the eye of the beholder. You know. What? Probably indefensible in court if you reject or anybody could argue that it's well what, 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 this is our job yeah what do you suggest I would say that it provides stormwater facilities that are functional well, there's you know, get away get away from the eye of the beholder because anybody can say it's not attractive or attractive what are you guys saying <laughs> well, attractive is indeed very subjective, no doubt about it. I mean, I don't think we talked about <coughs> senior center being attractive, did we? Or so I, I do think that the first five points there go to functions, mm -hmm. and the sixth point is that it be more than functional. Mm. I think we'd get rid of six completely. Are you allowed, or, is the audience allowed to speak? Yeah. The natural integrity of the environment. What the hell is that? Like, is the North Hadley Pond naturally integrative with its... <laughs> okay. I think you got to well, strike six completely. Or provide stormwater facilities that maintain the natural integrity of the environment and are designed to protect public safety or simply get, a, get rid of the words um, are attractive. But, but doesn't... Isn't the purpose of this bylaw to protect the public safety and the natural integrity of the environment? So why do we have to? That means there's going to be a fence around. Does that mean we get to let people off the hook and let them put in whatever they want? That's what I was going to say. That that's if you take that out and yeah. just have it functional, then you're going to end up with some horrendous looking stuff that you're not going to like, and then you're not going to be able to do anything about it. Yeah. But who, who decides I, attractive? Well, I the understand your board. question. The planning board. Mm -hmm. Right, the planning so board is going to have to do it. Yeah. Okay. We, we, had, we had the same discussion about what is adequate screening for solar panels. Uh, okay. Well, I, I, can, I can work with this one then because. You know, it, 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 it sometimes changes project to project. Well, you're right. The, the, this is how we stopped Eversource. You know, adequate screening. I, I argue that it could not be properly adequately adequately screened where they wanted to put it up here in North Maple Street and maybe I'm going to run into something if I'm still on this board this night could not possibly be attractive that remains to be seen I got you that, I got that, you I got that, you. that is a word that, that can be risky yeah okay not going to deny that I, I think you're better off leaving that in and trying to work around that than having just functional and trying to work around that. How about functionally, functionally attractive? <laughs> <laughs> That's worse. No, no, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> I, <laughs> anytime, I, I see any, your point, but I, we're here for the betterment of Hadley, and I think, the, I think that the, it's better to leave it for, to us to be reasonable uh -huh. in our use of that than to expect a developer to be reasonable if we don't have it in there. Yeah. yeah. Another thing about okay. the general bylaw, just so everybody aware, when yeah. you write a zone bylaw is very much what was the intent of that wording or that phrase or the intent of the, even that whole section, whatever it might be. So there's leeway, and this has been proven by court cases, in this what was the intent? What was the intent? Whereas a general bylaw that's not the case. The general bylaw has to be very specific and succinct. So, How about that, which, let, me, let me just finish. That's why you've got the purpose is written, and then you've got the regulations are extremely detailed. Um, and that's why it's there are 32 pages worth. It'll be less once yeah. we get rid of the cross oxen. What, what about it's still, it's not, still a, a big document? What about yeah. not aesthetically displeasing? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the word attractive. I really don't. Not aesthetically offensive. That's what I meant to say. Just 
think, think about it. You're, well, in the, you're in the same we, boat we, no we, matter what we, you, you say. Do, like, you have some time between now and the publication of the public I hearing to think about a word, Mike. Well, yeah. well, there might not be well, one, there may not be one word. That's okay. okay. If you could put a, a phrase in there, is that yeah, you could, okay. put, you, could put, you could change it to something that the planning board finds okay. to, here. to let, be let, a positive let, addition let, to the community. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let Mike think about it. Okay. So anyways, that, that's kind of where this bylaw sits, is that um, we're going to work with Joel to get wording from the zone bylaw to reference this, and um, this is kind of where this stands. This will be on the warrant for the fall town meeting. There yep. was there was one section where I did have a question. That's the last page on um, page seven, which uh, is under the penalties. Um, so you refer to this. I, I changed the um, citation um, to one section one five G of the general bylaw. I know you had a zoning. Um, citation in there originally um, if you look at your zoning bylaw yep. currently um, so I suggested because it's a general bylaw that it should cite a general bylaw um, and with that said um, then I would suggest or recommend that there be an amendment to that section to add and stormwater management and erosion control bylaw where the zoning inspector the zoning enforcement officer would be the person to levy the citation. Okay. The, the thing about an acre, mm -hmm. and I said, you really define it as 40,000 square feet. I said, what? And, but then you got builder's acre. We talk about acres here. Are we talking about a traditional acre? Are we talking about 43,560 square feet? Well, builder's acre is defined in there too. Yes. I just, I think it almost is just as if you're redefining what an acre is, 40,000 square well, feet, but that's not true. A unit of land equivalent to 40,000 square feet, you just Google it, it's 43,560 square right. feet. Right. I don't yeah. think you want to change that. We went, we went around with that somewhat when we were doing our talking and I said, well, rather than trying to make a big deal about it with our little committee, I, let's bring it forward to here. Okay. okay. And I don't like the word using just the word acre, even though we define it, because it's just going to be confusing in the bylaw. We should either, either call it a builder's acre everywhere, or simply get rid of that term entirely, and wherever we see it, substitute simply 40,000 square feet. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, so that it's clear because I can see confusion down the road. So when we do the TDR transfer development rights and we say, what is it, $9,000, $10,000, is that for 40,000 square feet or for, for 43,560 square feet? Th that's my point. That's my point. That's why I think we strike the definition of acre completely. Uh, well, is there any place so anywhere we use regular acre? I don't think so. Everything refers to the 40,000. How about TDR? Th th that's different. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me, let me finish. So in the definitions, we strike acre, and we strike builder's acre, and wherever we see it, see those th th that word acre or builder's acre in this bylaw, 40,000 40, just substitute 40,000 square feet so that we're clear. Because I want to make a mess. I mean, if it's confusing enough, <clears throat> Let alone using two terms, three, three terms interchangeably. Yeah. So. So we're because we do use redevelopment is defined as an acre. So, for instance, if we look at, um, so I put footnotes. So basically, everywhere that acre. Um, okay. In this iteration. Um, everywhere that acre showed up, I put a asterisk. Okay. Um, but I do think that it probably would help to just substitute forty thousand. Right. Forty thousand. So, feet. for instance, you know, if we were to look yeah. on page five at number four, uh, at the top, subdivisions of construction activities of any kind of disturbance, 
greater than or equal to forty thousand right mm -hmm. yes yeah. so that's what we use in our in the in the uh zone bylaw right now is forty thousand every place mm -hmm. and i think it'll just be clearer and would that also have to be rippled through the regulations? Correct. Yes. Okay. By the way, I want to thank you, Ken, for getting this stuff to us on a timely <laughs> manner. I mean, <laughs> really, it's great. Look at that. That's really, I, really, I, I, really, I was very impressed. That, that, was, that, that, was, that, that helped a lot to read it. Yeah. Well, when, when we met at the last meeting, we set on fr Friday the 13th, so yep. to make sure that all of my work we made sure that Hadley got its product. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, I think it's, it's, it's just so tell me how we're going to work through. We're not <clears throat> rescinding erosion and sediment control. Not entirely. That's what that's what Joel's going to help. Like we can get rid of definitions, but that's all in here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got I to gotta talk with Joel on how we're going to do that. So some portion of erosion and sediment control will remain in the zoning bylaw. I believe so. Just for also, the, the general bylaw gives the planning board basically the... Where does it Let's say that the planning board is the enforcement authority. Section 4, under administration, page 6. Oh, okay. I'm just looking at that. If we're going to enforce this bylaw, we, we can't enforce the zoning bylaw. How are we going to enforce this one? Yeah. Well, you're serving as the general bylaw is setting up the stormwater authority, which says the planning board is the stormwater authority. So, effectively, yeah. you're. you're going to be the you know the overseer of this bylaw um, so do we go out and stop people from building no no no, 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 no. The, yeah. the the conservation commission will have their authority the dpw will essentially be our authority to enforce this bylaw as well as the building inspector during construction, it'll pretty much be the building inspector mm -hmm. in some conjunction with the DP, let's just use the DPW director as opposed to the whole department. After construction and after inspections, we are still responsible for inspections, if you would. But the DPW will have the authority to do the inspections and charge for the inspections on a fee basis. So that they're not taking it out of the general budget to do a lot of these inspections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They can charge a fee for it to cover their costs. And they are essentially our um, enforcer once the project, once they have a CO. Is that is that's, there a responsibility talked about here that DBW is basically our enforcement office? It's in the um, regulations. regulations. Yeah. Specific to inspections. Uh, because DPW, DPW is re required to do an annual, uh, a report for the MS4 permit every year. So, um, you know, the amount of mm -hmm. inspections that they do, um, that's why they would be the one doing them. Um, I know that the working group will probably have to be discussing fees eventually, whether or not it's an application fee or you know, fee for service once the construction is complete. Um, but as Jim said, the applicant or the developer would be required to pay for those inspections. Does, does Spencer come up with a fee schedule? They do, but I think, and in speaking with the town planner, um, who is the, who the planning board is the stormwater authority, um, I think they were running into some issues where the money wasn't covering the inspection. Well, that was where I was going. Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, how much do you think the service is worth? I, mean, I, I couldn't tell you. I, yeah, I, mean, I, I think thousands of dollars. Well, the, the other important thing, too, is certainly you have to establish the fee schedule, but the other thing is, is it going to go back to the highway department or is it going to go into the general fund? It would be a revolving fund. We, 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 we estimate it would right. be like a, a the same kind of the revolving fund that the highway department has now, it goes into a fund, 
the Hawaii Department gets paid out of it for their fee for their whatever they're using. Just like they have the the Park and Recs has that was, was, is it revolving fund? What is it called, Bill? Yeah, it's a revolving revolving fund. Yeah. That's the one that we set up every year. We put some money into it for the year to keep it going. And then as the fees come in, the fees are paid out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the year, I think, I'm not sure, but at the end of the year, because the balance left in there goes into the general fund. Not, uh, what does it say? They all, they all have authority to retain a, up to a certain amount. Okay. So if you, if you have authority to retain 20000 and you collect 25000 in one year, 5000 rolls back to the general fund, but 20000 okay. stays in the revolving okay. fund. Okay. Well, what you have to guard against is kind of like a bounty hunter. In other words, they need more money for mm -hmm. a new truck, so they're going to charge more fees. Yeah, no, they don't get to do it that way. No, well, I know. Well, that's what you don't want. It. <laughs> it'll, 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 be, it'll be set kind of on a... Okay. Actually, Chris was thinking about how we would set the fees up for the inspections. Right. And he, you know, he was... He's thinking about that. He doesn't have an answer to that right. yet. It's, it's not an easy thing. And I believe even even so, for a revolving fund, I believe the town would have to, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but the town would have to vote to allow for the revolving yes. fund. Yes, they do. Right. So, they they don't yeah. have to be created by town right. meeting. Yeah. Every town meeting, we vote on those. Yeah. So, uh, under administration, you say the Stormwater Authority, i.e. the Planning Board, may waive strict compliance with this bylaw if such action is allowed by federal, state, and local statutes, bylaws, and their regulations. Strict is a word like attractive. What does that mean? Well, I think if it... Um, we have that in our bylaws already. Yeah, if there, I mean, if there's a threshold that it doesn't quite necessitate a certain product that needs to be submitted to the planning board, um, we talked about particularly the requirement for an erosion and sediment control plan. Um, it may not be applicable to all projects based on you know the potential size and the project mm -hmm. size because there are other components. Um, that are required under this MS4 permit. Um, so, you know, similar to, and it is the planning board's determination, and more than likely the applicant, if they cannot meet or request a waiver, which is not, but the applicants usually request a waiver when they can't meet it. But, but um, it says we can. Waive strict compliance if such action is allowed by federal, state, and local statutes, bylaws, or regulations. How could we possibly know that? How could we possibly the know that? The person asking for waiver would have to demonstrate you. Yeah. So that you, you, you need a legal opinion for that? Effect? No, Maybe. no. You might, well, you're going to need an engineering opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their engineer is going to request it. Our engineer, reviewing engineer, mm -hmm. is going to comment on it. They're the ones that are okay. going to know this federal state and lo federal state bylaws way better than we are because they're going to be dealing with them all the time mm -hmm. and they're okay. going to advise us it's a reasonable thing or unreasonable thing and we can ask them what that means are there going to be any special exemptions for example for agriculture or educational as in the dover amendment Edu agriculture is covered under the ms agriculture i mean well, how is it covered I exemption B one. Oh, okay. Um, if you have an approved soil conservation plan, if you have an APR, you have an approved soil conservation plan. Okay. So. How about Dover Amendment? Does that give that's the zoning? No, but is it give yeah, the solution no. to build any no. kind of building uh, no, without no. any compliance to? So zone. that's forty A section. What, Correct. three? 40, this is not 40A. This the, derives from a different source, so there will be no Dover exemptions okay. to this. Just as there are no Dover exemptions to uh, the Wetlands Protection Act, as far as I know. Right. Yeah. Under pollutants, you've got pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. So are you saying that Every farmer out there that puts pesticides. Farmers, farmers are exempted from this. 
Why do, we have, why do we have that in there? Then? Because when you have a business, they use pesticides, herbicides, and stuff like that on their property. So, so as long as they are in compliance uh -huh. with the label, they're okay. But if they're not, if they use it else not in compliance with the label, granted, I agree. How do you know they're not using it in compliance with the label? Virtually any lawn and garden or landscaper is in compliance because uh -huh. They, the penalties, if they're not, are so horrendous. They're all licensed. They're all, well, not certified, but they're all licensed right. by the state. Right. Every year. No, except yeah, in California. So that's it. We're not in California. We're in Massachusetts. No, but glyphosate is considered a carcinogen. That's why we're in Massachusetts. We're not in California. We're in Massachusetts. We don't need to worry about California. Guess what? Well, that, so that, that, two and a half started in California. Well, that's going to court, anyways. Yeah. If I guarantee. Yeah. I could change the tide here. Um, back at the beginning, um, we mentioned that this was brought to us by the working, what we call it, the working committee. Co committee. Yeah. And that you mentioned who was on it. That was uh, Mr. Okafor and someone from the Janice Stone, Tim Ihart, and myself. Con -con, okay. Yeah. Um, is it fair to assume that this was brought here by consensus? That all, Absolutely. they're all good. Yes. Absolutely. I just wanted that out sure. you know, because they're not here yeah. represented. Yeah. Well, we, well, we have to. We're, we're the ones that have to sit right at the town meeting. Right? right. But we would hope to have their support, which we should, since right. it was. Yeah, because I mean they all play an important part. Yeah. So. When that was that was the reason for their inclusion into the working group, right. yeah. um, and you know I think when we worked through many of the very specific. When things. the state said this is a general bylaw, it's not necessarily up to us to bring it. It's up to all constituents to bring it to town meeting. So I w I'm not going to. I wouldn't expect to see this advertised as a planning board article exclusively. Um, I would expect to see DPW and Conservation Commission standing up there with Jim. Well, Jim is the only citizen soldier. We have to congratulate you for donating your time because the the other ones are hired guns. So, <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't under pollutants you say animal waste and residues? Does that include wild animals on my property? On a property? If you trap them, it does. It does well. If you good agricultural practices, you're supposed to keep track of geese. How many geese fly over your property? And I'm sure you so do that on a daily basis. I suppose if you had ex an excessive amount of geese on your property yeah. in your pond, yeah. like they, you will occasionally see in the certain parts of town. Sometimes there's literally thousands of them. Sure. Then uh, you know in the Cushman well, I, I would suspect water if you are uh, uh, if it's naturally occurring, you wouldn't be responsible for it. But yeah. if you're uh, baiting them in oh, some yeah. way, yes. then um, I think you you do buy some responsibility. We're yeah. digressing. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's basically the bylaw. I'm you know we'll, we'll, it's scheduled to be on town meeting more. We're working with like I said Joel on updating the general bylaw. To work with this yeah and um, at a future meeting prior to the adoption of the bylaw the, the, we'll the public hearing will be the third Tuesday of October okay this is not going to be a public hearing because this is not a public hearing article right but the, the job the zoning bylaw will okay I mean we're not going to be it'll be impossible not to talk about to not talk about the zoning article without talking about this as well Fair, sure. that's beside the point yeah um, but the regulations will be forthcoming once those are finalized. Okay. Definitions. So, um, because I was absent at the last meeting, I did watch the proceedings. I think I captured most of the things that were discussed at the meeting. Um, so what you have before you is um, basically and, and Jim did provide um, a working document that I worked off of um, from your last meeting. Um, so what you have in front of you is 
a set of definitions which include all your definitions that existed in specific sections of the bylaw um, to address things like adult uses, aquifer protection, um, bed and breakfast, and those again, as I mentioned, are specific to the bylaw, have specific sections. And those are also referenced with section numbers. Um, and then uh, other definitions that I've suggested that you know are prevalent through the bylaw, throughout the bylaw, um, that probably could help with this definition, um, as well as ones that you um, suggested to look at, like automobile sales. Um, but I don't know if, if there was any specific, there are some comments that still exist um, in regards to uh, whether or not you felt that they could be pulled out and put in generally rather than in within the section. Um, for instance, things like development. Uh, your definition of development is found in flood overlay related terms. Could development be pulled out and just be a general definition of development? Um, that same goes for something like structure. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple comments right away. Sure. On, I guess like page three, building height. It still has the mean height level of the roof. We've got to get rid of the mean height level and get okay. to the peak of the roof. Mm -hmm. The highest point of the peak. The flat roof definition is fine, but if we have to the peak level, we don't want the mean. Right. We want the peak height. So, um, to, so the vertical distance measured from the established grade in business or industry districts or from the natural grade in residence di districts if higher than the established grade or if no grade has been established to the level of the highest point of the... Roof beams in a case of flat roofs, that's okay. fine. Or roofs... Roofs inclining not more than one inch of the foot, that's okay. Okay. And then, but when then the next set, the next and the mean height level between the top of the main plate and the highest ridge, we don't want the mean height, we want it to go to the peak of the ridge. Okay. So, and to the... And to the highest point. The highest point. In or the to, case to of the other roofs. What are you measuring that from? The grade. But what if what if the lot is uh, one height here and one it, height It addresses here? that. Where the it lot does. faces two or more okay. streets, the established grade is the average level of the grade on the street frontage where the average grade is highest. Right. That's good. We're going to pick up. So that um, section can read um, and to the highest point in the case of other roofs. Say that again now. Um, so we, we establish those other def uh, you know, points within the definition and then the last sentence or the last clause of that and to the highest point in the case of other roofs. That's no, not not to the highest point, because I don't want it to, we don't want it to include uh, to the highest the, ridge, the, the highest point ridge. Of, of the of the to the to the so the, ridge is fine to the ridge, yeah, because oh, we don't want the highest point. People could that, be yeah, that could misinterpret it to be like uh, cupolas right. and who knows what else. Okay, okay, but to Randy's point, the uh, where the lot faces two or more streets, that doesn't answer Randy's question. Yes, so you have a sloping lot. You do. Oh, oh, okay, you're right, you're right. For the lot phase of two or more street. Um, the lot faces one street, but it's built into a hillside. Right, right. Where the lot faces two or more streets, the established grade is the average grade on that street frontage where the average grade is highest. Then we could put semicolon or even period. Where the lot faces one street, 
with varying grades, the grade shall be average of the, that frontage street. Right? That's what you mean. Yes. Yeah, if you got here yeah. and here on the front on, on the on the uh, yeah. on the front lot on the frontage, yeah. forget the sides. We're talking frontage. It'll be the average of these two. Well, you, I think you've got to figure it out. Let's let's say my my lot slopes the street. You know, my building sloped against the perpendicular to the street versus the streets here, and I'm at this height, and my backyard is here. What if one side's here and the other side's we're, there? We're going to go strictly by the frontage. Okay. We'll, de we'll, de we'll define the frontage as the average grade, as opposed to trying to go the average around the pro I think the frontage is really the one that most concerns. So you could be 60 feet in the back right. if it drops off, but as right. long as you're no more than 50 feet in okay, the front. So what, what 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 if your light lot slopes high in the back and low in the front, your back may only be 20 feet high, uh, I'll give extremes. Yeah, understood. And, and it'll, it'll still be 35 in the front. Okay, yeah, that's fine. As long as it's spelled out that people understand right. what they do. The front is really the, it's where most people are going to see it. Right. Mm. Okay. Right. okay. So, yeah, in a case of a, of a dropping of a, of a uh, what do you call it, walkout cellar, you're right. going to have. Yeah, I have that in my house. Right. So, I've only got four feet difference from the front to the back. Yeah. So, you're telling me that in my situation, whatever my grade is at the front is going to dictate the height of my building. Correct. Okay. Good, good, good question. If you really want to split hairs, I'm not sure what the average grade would be on a, you know, we were just saying on a, a single street frontage with a sloping grade. What if it's like this and then it drops like that? Is the average, you're, you're Taking average means you, you take certain values. So do you go every ten feet and then average those? I think you're going to find that whereas the mean would be halfway. Inch. You're not. If, that is going to be a very very rare occurrence yeah. if you see that. Right? Yeah. But if, if, I, if it were me, I would say, all right, I'm at zero here, and I I, I come I drop a foot, and then all of a sudden I drop ten. Yeah. I'm going to say zero ten. What's the average? And it's five. And it's not five. But well it, well, it, it is. If it, it is. drops in the center, if it goes mostly across and then it drops. Well, we're not, yeah. we're not defining yeah. that. It's yeah. the average of, yeah. the, of the grades. It is and five. So the the they're either right. going to find a way to fill in that last five feet yeah. and make it level, or they're going to yeah. live with the, or they're going to live with the five foot yeah. lower roof. Yeah. In the case of that, it, that, that's a good point. When you go someplace like, let's say it drops off the last five feet, they're going to find a way to fill that in to make it level. Yeah. Unless they can't because they're they have a budding property or something. But yeah, I mean, whatever. Well, and then there's we'll stuff with what it, it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the next one, developable farmland. And this is, what are we looking to? Um, it's under. It's near the top of the page is a bed and breakfast related term. At the bottom of the page is highlighted in blue. Bold, in blue. Okay. Gotcha. Developable framework. I got a couple of questions. The worst one is landed as enrolled under Master of Laws, Chapter 61A, and then it goes through all, all the rest of the stuff. What if it's not in 61A? Not all heavy farmland is in 61A. It's an APR, which is another story. Then it doesn't count as development because it can't be developed. But another question is do we need the definition of developable farmland? Does that appear in a bylaw? Um, I wonder why I put this in here. I think I think that is in your bylaw, currently okay. in your bylaw. I don't, That's a, I don't think it is. I don't know. Because my note says since one definition in this section, I made its own definition without the related terms treatment. So I think is it in TDR section seventeen. That's TDR I think. It seems to be the only place it would have a home. I would think so, but I'm not sure. Section. Yes, developable farmland is defined in TDR. So uh, maybe just <coughs> yeah, it is it's exactly out of 61A. It, it, it is this definition. It is the only definition in Section 17. So maybe just 
put C section 17. Oh, under that? For that one. For that one. No, there was how it's a reference section 17. To put, put, put a reference of section 17. So similar to. Um, bed and breakfast above it. Similar to child care facility. You know, where you get the bed and breakfast related term, this is the transfer development right related term, C section, we refer to section 17. So take out the definition, just say refer to section 17. I think so, since, okay. since it's the only place in the bylaw that it appears. Oh yeah, okay, for the definition of developable primal, it just said C section 17, yes, that's what it looks like. Yes. 17 to. Okay. Okay. And. That makes sense. And uh, yeah. certainly with the transfer of development rights, you don't want somebody giving you a swamp land. <coughs> I got a feeling this our mistake. We may not even need it. Okay, that's our wording. So do we accept your definitions for hotel and motel? Yeah. It's, um, it's up to you. Um, so they were offered because it did not include um, the MGL citation, as well as motel. I was interested in the current definition, which says is a private club or is a private club. I stayed at a hotel, well, it was a lodge when I was out skiing in Utah. And they established this hokey thing about we're a club and you just sign this little book. And that allowed them to serve you alcohol because otherwise they couldn't serve you alcohol. Hmm. Uh, you know, I don't and maybe I'm just not familiar no, with that. I'm not sure term. that that is really germane here. Well, you got the young men's club. You can't do. What well, says or is a private club? Yeah, I think they're trying to be a motel. So I think you you have something like a, a college of alumni club and the Williams Club in North Bend, or the Harvard Club in Manhattan, or something like that. But we don't have any anything like that. So maybe just delete that or is a private club. or just use the proposed ones. Since we're deleting all of these out of their underlying sections, mm -hmm. I don't have any read. You know. We can still represent to town meeting that most of these are unchanged. Um, if we're not, we're clarifying problems. Yeah. Yeah, maybe use your definition that you've got under the comments perhaps for those two. Okay. And replace them with that. Leave lodging house, right? Yeah. And we've been used hotel and motel as a definition you've got. Okay. So do we have any motels left in the hand? Anywhere. <laughs> no, there's none. I mean, you have to be Yeah, yes you do. The one where next to back of uh, where Stan used to be is still a motel. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Not many. The, uh, it's amazing when you read through the definitions at one place how you find things that <clears throat> don't make sense. Under, going forward, under inclusionary zoning terms, we can probably get rid of this. Affording affordable housing trust fund, we probably get rid of that definition entirely. Because we don't have it, and we're not likely to have it. Well, that, I'm not sure that we're not likely to have it. That's an ongoing discussion. Okay, but right now we don't have it. So we don't have it. Should we leave it in there? Um, I think, well, maybe Pioneer Valley Planning Commission will come up with a, uh, an idea. 
Well, no, they, they're going to have their own affordable housing trust fund units. Right? Um, uh, not like you I know, that's, I think, that's I think, affordable I think should, housing unit. That was that's yeah, different. Yeah. Affordable yeah. housing trust fund is something we would do locally. Yeah. I think you, I think you should leave it in because if you take it out, then you got to mend the bylaw to put it in again. Okay. Anyway, the, the the wording should be, and I caught this when I'm reading this: affordable housing trust fund. A fund is a fund created to receive <laughs> fees in lieu of. And I, I've made a comment, a fund is a fund, right. but when I looked at our bylaw, that's exactly what it says. <laughs> so, a whole affordable housing trust fund is a fund created to receive fees and get rid of the well, first, a fund is a fund. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Ed would be proud of us. It's a horse, a fund is a fund. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on lot related terms on the yeah, next page. We had that question and I was trying to figure out how to yeah I I made a, a, a note to myself to check out our lot items in our bylaw and I never got to it but I know that we have a bunch of terms that define lot probably differently than this does only because it does. Uh, let's see, we do have side yard. You don't have width in there, do we? Yes. We define oh, width, 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 width depth. No, we, we depth define width. width. There's width in there. We define. So if I had a lot. Under depth, the we blue, define width the and frontage. It's, that's not quite the definition of width. Okay, I'm not going to disagree with you. saying we have width in there. Okay, we do not define front yard this way, or rear yard, or depth. And the, uh, where we created that term about lot width is consistent with from the frontage to the uh, rear plane of the principal structure? Yes. One point has to touch the front. So right. that, that isn't in here. That part didn't, right. didn't transfer because that was set out sort of as a separate section. Okay. On, when you've got lot-related terms, right, yep. perhaps the following terms that apply to the regulation of lots, I would put in there also see section 4.3 as opposed to reference because we have special definitions on a bunch of stuff in there. You define depth, frontage, rear, corner, etc. But in 4.3, we give some other definitions beyond that of okay. things that has to be done to okay. meet width and depth and stuff and rear yard. Okay. okay, so your de your definitions are correct, but these work to give a little bit more confusion <laughs> <laughs> to how other things they have to make to me. Right. Okay. And how you would interpret it based on four point three. Yeah. Right. So the mean distance allows for you to have a curved boundary in the front. Right. Well, I was wondering, what if you have a dog leg shaped site, and that, do they have to be perpendicular, the width and depth, or would it be the mean? Well, we don't like care the about the back end of it, but what we do care about is the front end of it to the structure yeah. is the same width. Mm -hmm. What it does behind that, we don't care. But we, what we dealt with was a situation where people were putting in um, a the appropriate square, then running off to a building lot somewhere in the in the distance. Um, there are a couple of plans that we printed out to show people why we were going to make this change. We had some really convoluted lot designs, 
They were so. awesome lot designs, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, creative. <laughs> the creative lot. Anyway. With this 4.3.6. So that's why the width it only goes to, um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, perpendicular to the depth, right? With uh, 50, one, 50 by 150 must fit, uh, no point between the front line and the rear of the principal structure shall have a lot width less than the minimum. But after you get to the rear of the principal structure, you can dogleg any way you want or put a circle at the end, whatever you want. Well, to, ex to expand on that, Mark, uh, there were people that could not even put a house on a building lot, yet it did conform originally to the frontage area, and they'd have to go for a variance even if they wanted to put a bulkhead in, so. Yep. Right, I mean, there's no what happen if this is your street. There's the no lots. truth to the rumor, Randy, that I put my head on a piece of paper and traced it. The lots would look place. something like this, as an exaggeration, where this is 150 feet. Yeah. They used to this may up. only be six it's feet deep. Yeah. Oh. And this is, say, 30 feet. Yeah. So if you do this properly, you have enough acre and enough frontage, well, how do you put a house on there? Okay. Now, that, and this is not an exa this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but not much in what was going on. So, who does that benefit? The guy selling it, not the one buying it. That's for sure. Well, this is a lot of times that was carved out of out of a piece of property and given to a, a sibling or a, uh, a child or you know stuff like that. Yeah. Those are the few comments I had. Other than that, I think this looks really good. Um, I know that you had a comment or a question about professional or business office. After, yeah, af after thinking about that, <clears throat> I think the definition you got is okay. What we need to define and maybe we've done it in our bylaw is uh, I gotta is uh, I gotta find out where it appears. Is it in the home occupation or not? No, I don't believe it. No, is. no, no, that's not it. Was You, you have that as a, a use. Right. Bank business professional office is allowed in site by special permit. In the local business and limited business. That's fine. The uh, maybe it's one more. Maybe we, we may have corrected it, we put our definitions in this chart and realized it and, and got rid of it entirely. But it was, a, it was something about where professional office being allowed in the agri-residential dis district. Uh, maybe that is, I know. What, what's, uh, that? Oh, that was the, yeah, that was the old definition of uh, Professional business access, uh, customary home occupation right. such as candy making. Candy making. Yeah, and and <laughs> there was a Bill and I were disagreeing on what professional office meant in the ag residential ag residential district. He said, "Well, he thought it should include like lawyers and engineers and doctors." And I says, "No, the intent was carpenters and mechanics working out of their house." but not really having customers come to see him. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're a, an engineer or an architect or an attorney, you're going to have people come into your house because you've been working out of it. Mm -hmm. So there's, and then that's basically pretty much, we got rid of that now by making it a special permit for that kind of stuff. Okay. 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 So if you've got a home office and you work out of it and no customers, You've got no customers, and people do that all, all over the place. Yeah. If you're going to have customers, now you need a special firm. The CPA who is getting 
car after car after car on you know, April 14th. Wow. Yeah, with one of the triggers for okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but we, we we that was that was addressed. We, we kind of taken care of that, so we're okay. With it. Okay. Yeah, I, remember, I remember making that comment for me, and then after I went to the definitions, what you would put what I think this says. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, wait a minute. I think we got rid of that, and what you have now makes sense to me. Okay. So make a couple changes. Get it back to us. Yes. We'll, we'll send it off to. Uh, so mechanically, how are we going to accomplish this? Because we have to go <laughs> mechanically. I don't think this is going to be ready for fall town meeting because it's going to be one complicated article. At first, I would say we could go through like what you said and put all the definitions in one section and make a uh, carte blanche statement to do this, but we're not doing that. We're leaving some definitions here. We're referring right. to them. So. Once we get this together, I will create the zone amendment and I'm gonna have to go through section by section and says we're gonna take these definitions out, they're gonna go here. We're gonna take these definitions out and they're gonna go here. Because there's no it's gonna be an extremely wordy article just to make sure it's done right. the way we want. Otherwise it's gonna I, I don't right. I think it's gonna be very misleading. Okay. And I mean, that's like, I don't see a way around it. Yeah. You know, you can't. You it's going to take me literally a couple of weeks to do that. Yeah. Well, talk to Joel about that, too, when you're talking to him anyway. Is yours? The only thing, yeah. I, I, that's yeah. possible, though. The only thing is, we'll see, we've got some definitions in here that we're leaving in the sections. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's home business, home occupation, C section right, 20. Right. So you can't strike section 20. Yeah. Are you guys um, in the planning program? I mean, you could do separate articles, one adds, and then the next one subtracts, but then one passes and the other no, one doesn't. This, 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 this will just be one article. It'll be adopt these definitions and delete these out of these sections. Um, it's not going to be, like I said, it's going to be a wordy, wordy article, but I don't think it'll be complicated. What about the open space in there, which seems to have multiple references? There's open space that's in the general, and then it's in one of the I, I don't sections. think we define open space. There's one that says C section 5.5. Oh, I see what you're saying. I think that just needs to be removed. And then on the next page, it's it's defined under senior housing terms. We're so here it's in the general section, alphabetical says refer to 5.5 and then you turn the page and it's defined again. Yeah, that, that's specific to um, the senior housing section. Sorry, so there are two uses of that term. Okay. But I don't know if you want to either straw. I don't know. Well, if it's specific to senior housing, we can re we can just label it senior housing open space. That's true. And distinguish it from other open space. Or I think what you can do here, because I, generally it is undeveloped land set aside for common individual ownership um, as a result of not necessarily senior community development. Um, with conservation easements and other deeded restrictions to ensure the land will remain permanently open and undeveloped. If you wanted to, I guess, refer to section 5.5 and then have another sentence that says for senior housing, a um, condition of senior housing development approval is that open space may not be further subdivided. So you can address it in where it appears first, mm. or you, uh, I think as Bill suggested, just saying senior. I call it senior housing. open space because they're very different. Um, so yeah, just call it senior open, uh, senior housing open space. Senior housing open space. Okay. So that kind of moves it to the other section. In senior housing, the other open space is open to the sky. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, that's very different. As a side, you heard the discussion earlier about parking. 
Any thoughts on that? Well, I looked at the bylaw and that you have to have double. Two the, square feet of parking for each square feet of building. Yeah. No, that includes driveways, not just the parking spaces. Okay. But that includes any business, whether right. you're. Well, so, and many towns, um, not necessarily rural town, but you have a lot of commercial development. Maybe it would be worthwhile to look at amend an amendment to address parking for various types of uses. Um, and I don't know if maybe that was a discussion you had so before. We did. We did. Yeah. I had a con. I started an email thread with Wayne Biden about that, okay. uh, specifically about the question of it. Is there a parking master list like there is the uh, traffic study? book sure. and he said that there is but it's outdated and it really comes down to what your goals are so for example in Northampton they do not require a downtown business owner or business to provide any parking at all correct because they want you to park in the parking garage right. so they're steering you to the parking garage yeah and once you get off into that into those weeds then um, yeah, I think we want to move very carefully, but I think maybe having something, a different definition in the industrial district yeah, um, because for industrial uses. For, and I, think, yeah, I think that's a point. In the industrial district for industrial uses, because we allow all kinds of uses, mm -hmm. business uses yeah. in the industrial district. Yeah. But if you're an industrial use, chances are you're going to put up a pretty good sized building. Right. And you're only going to need a small amount of parking. Right. Yeah. When when I when I heard a thousand parking spaces, I said, "Huh?" Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anything off the rack? You but, <laughs> but, but Joe, go ahead. But uh, I don't know if you heard the example. Echelon used to yeah. be an auto right. parts right. store. Yes. It's a perfect example. All of a sudden, the businesses will eventually yeah. leave the business, yeah. and they'll want to sell that for a mini mall. So and we're going to say you can't do that, even though the guy's giving a megabucks. How come you're denying me? Okay. So that's why we key it to industrial key, uses. Key it to industrial uses. That if the use changes, you're not an industrial use. You must now that's, comply. That's, so it, it's, that's, really, it's, really, it's going to be a very limited area that and you know, So as it happens, Walmart is in, an, in the industrial district. Yeah. So you can't have retail in, in industrial. We were right. concerned at one point that uh, Mountain Farms Mall had such a dim future that it, it might be um, a manufacturing facility. They, they, they were actually doing some when but they were. They, 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 they went, uh, this goes back when okay. we changed the use. Um, there was a company that started in a mini, mini BJ type of business, and they were using um, much of the mall as a DC for their goods. Okay. Okay. And it worked out for them, I would say, maybe two years. Then they closed up and were gone, and that was it. The mall sat pretty empty for a while until they revitalized it with stores that are pretty much currently in there. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll maybe just scope out some examples. Because I think to the point that you brought up in regards to Echelon, Echelon? Is that Echelon? Echelon. Um, if it was a formerly a auto repair store, or no, it was an auto parts store. Auto parts, parts, parts store. It was the Typic meat market before. Right. Yeah. Typically, I mean, and the thing is, you know, and I pass by it. And there's yeah. parking, and I, you know, but you would treat any new use having to go back to the board, um, whether or not it needs any specific approval from the board usually it would be a site plan or approval then you address the type of use and if the if the town had parking requirements for those specific types of uses like a restaurant you know three parking spaces for every six seats or something right. like that um, you know then you could do that we could so it actually it, that in some ways is a bad example because that came in through several back doors sure. When they first changed their use from auto parts to restaurant, they satisfied the parking requirement. Okay. Then they uh, enclosed their porch. Then they built an outdoor seating area. 
neither of which at the time were triggers for site plan approval. Okay. For not further site plan approval. Not but quite all the parking requirements because we gave them a initially they, setback requirement. Yeah, initially, well, they we they met the area requirements for parking when they first came in, mm -hmm. but they effectively doubled their summer floor area by these expansions yeah and we subsequently amended the bylaw to say your part your floor area for parking includes all outside areas mm -hmm. used for your function uh -huh. that did was not in effect when Esalon uh -huh. initially was approved so that's why i say they came in through a couple of back doors yeah. so they kind and of then things like that happen yeah so uh -huh. the big question we're going to have to face is do we want to take a whole comprehensive review of our parking or do we want to do a small step like for indoor I, I think we want to just I think for the time being we want to do the industrial use in an industrial zone. I agree. And to be honest with you, see how that works. Correct. Okay. Okay. And there's no way at all to get that on the fall town meeting. No. No, I don't think no. No. That's gonna be that's pretty they probably meeting. close the warrant. The warrant closes. The warrant closes, but we got the four, four slots on there. The so warrant closes tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. and we pretty much. Um, How many slots we got on there? What's the one? We have two zone articles, definitions, MS4. No. Zone definitions. Um, we have zone definitions reserved. You covered. Amend <laughs> the uh, erosion sediment control zone bylaw. Amend. The general bylaw for sediment control, and then we had the petition article, uh, or by a landowner to rezone the land on the other side by Mr. Dion back to senior and to extend this expand the senior housing overlay district. So there's no other slots there. That's the only slots I request. Even if there were, Mike, I would not want to. Yeah, I wanted more time to think oh, through yeah. the concept. Oh, yeah, because we're only going to have we're only going to have one meeting to think about it. Um, gotcha. So, anyways. Right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. comb around and share yeah. something with the I have to apologize. I have to leave a 10 of, so hopefully the lot of stuff right. you had. I've just got A&R stuff, so. Okay. Just these three signatures. Three yeah, signatures. Okay. Yeah, and, and the, uh, where's the right request for the, uh, right. actually, yeah. Yeah. okay. So a couple of things. Uh, Ken, do we want to meet with you? In two weeks or in at the public hearing? Public hearing. Well, okay, I think the public hearing, so you can be in for that and yeah. see what answer any questions might come up. Okay. okay. So what's the first is an open right open agenda. Correct. What's that date? October uh, 15th for the public hearing. 24th for fall town meeting. Okay. While you're still here, Mark. Contain a motion for uh, payroll for the period July to September 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Yeah, I still have a half an hour. I just didn't know how much rain you had. But if you, you got to give that portion of the pay back. But of course. Okay. Um, we're good, kid. Thank you. Right. See you in a month. Thank you. Uh, thank you again for the time and time. Oh, Mark is still here. Um, there is going to be training on the laser fish program, which is supposed to be a system that allows um, all of our applications to be filed and retrieved, searched online. Uh, they have an all-day training program tomorrow. Uh, I'm not able to provide. Oh, you can't go. Oh, not all day. So, uh, yeah, I'm not able to go all day. Um, I don't know if there is any. Um, I can't go all day. Would you like to go and report back to us? Yeah. <laughs> you might get credit. Might get credit. I can go. I can go up something over in the afternoon, but I can't make it an appointment. Wait, this is this is Thursday. Thursday, I guess. I guess it is Thursday. Yes. Yeah, that's Thursday. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow's the 18th. It's Wednesday. I can make something in the afternoon, but I can't make it in the morning. Yeah. When can you make it? I maybe could go a little while in the morning, but um, you 
you know, I, I, I'm told that part of this is going to be just setting up conventions about how you're going to name your files after you scan them. Um, and give me a break. They, I have also learned that uh, there isn't going to be training going forward. Can we get this on the uh, So that when we are no longer there, or there's a different person in the clerk's office or the treasurer's office, they're they're going to just have to blindly follow whatever has been set up. Now, what does laserfish mean? That'd be some computer term. Smaller than well, no, I understand microfiche. it's a computer term, but I mean, what is it? Is it Oh, I understood microfiche was, was sort of a, a, an improvement on uh, microfilm that was really small. Uh, I know what micro, microfiche is. I don't know what laserfiche is. Uh, I believe this has come to us through a grant. It be a digital term. With the yeah. city of Northampton it's, in some it's way. It's got to be mean, some fancy well, digital micro term. Microfiche is, I don't know how to use microfiche in about, it must have taken me a whole five minutes. Yeah. It's got to be just some term for yeah. digital yeah. storage. That's, that's what I'm thinking. If this is what I, th if this is related to what I think it is, shouldn't be really difficult. To spend a day on it will be a little bit, might possibly be a little bit boring. Uh -huh. I mean, I must remind you, you that this is government. How I'm surprised you, how you a week on it. How you name your files is up to you. Right. Well, I find that I save my files in a very specific way so that it's easy to search them and find them. So that you might be what they, you know, so how for, you do... Um, for you. Your suffix. For you. Yeah, for right. you. Well, Everybody's I want it to different. be logical for somebody else, so yeah. Yeah, I for, mean, yeah. but once somebody figures out what you've done, they can kind of put themselves in, okay, this is the way he was thinking. Right. Mm. It's, it's no different than I have a thousand file cabinets in my basement and I have things filed a certain way and if somebody calls me on the phone in two minutes I can have an answer for them because I know how it's done it's going to be no different with the computer mm -hmm. set it up the way that makes sense and whoever you whoever's going to use it you teach and amen well I think that's the idea here but um, I, I am I haven't really been given any reason why it takes that long, except that's what the trainers say they need. Uh -huh. Well, it'll be all day training. People may wander in and wander out. Maybe, I don't know. I no, I, no? no, that's no, no, not no. how. Let's, Randy, let's get here. It says yeah, all yeah. day. Yeah, anyway, right. okay. so much fun. Right. Okay, I, I have what I need. Neither Jim nor I are available. I don't care all anyone. Way all day. I don't hear anyone else no, volunteering, so um, you, I, you will attend part of the day and I'll attend part of the day and we'll see where we go. Yep, and if it doesn't work out, we'll, we'll coordinate. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't Mr. work out that way, we... Mr. Isaac. Yes, I have two A&Rs, one that's quite simple and one that's going to lead into a multitude of things. So we'll start with the easy one. 269 Bay Road. Rego Masta owns the property. It is not where his business is. It is next door. The house that he purchased, I don't know how long ago. But anyhow, there's a almost eight acre parcel behind the building that an abutter wants to buy. Randy, can you refresh my memory on A and R? Approval not required, uh, meaning that yeah. it meets the zoning bylaw, then you guys have to sign it. Mm -hmm. What was the address? 269, 269. Bay Road. So there are three parcels shown on this plan. The existing house went with all this land, which was eight. 12, almost 13 acres. So the abutter over on Chamura Road, which used to be Mark Klopaki's house, is now a different owner. They want to buy this to add to their holdings. This 
wonderful looking piece is going to go with the house. This piece, parcel A, is going to go with the Omasta business property because they have been storing machinery and whatnot out here, uh, leftover uh, construction materials. So parcel A is going with this piece. Remaining area is staying with the house. Parcel B is going where with is that this, piece. Where is this parcel part of today? This? This, yeah. This is, this is all one piece. Okay. So this is a separate piece the envelope? Correct. Get nothing to do with it? Correct. Okay. That's a different owner. Yep. Okay. 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 This is on the So what's going to happen over here? Remaining area? That is just staying with the house, Joe. It's the whole, this whole piece. Okay. Okay, and we've got a pre, I mean, we have enough frontage, but it's a pre-existing lot, so. Let's, let's, let's try to keep things sane this evening. Did you start, Mike? Mm -hmm. seen this type of stuff before? No. Okay, so I'm a land surveyor, mm -hmm. and what I'm, I've surveyed this piece of property, and it's about 13 acres, and part of it is going to an abutter, part, one abutter, another part is going to a different abutter, and the remaining is staying with the house, and in the state of Massachusetts, we have what's called approval not required, which means mm -hmm. that as long as it's not a definitive subdivision and it passes the zoning, mm -hmm. the planning board has to sign it. They have 21 days to act on it if they are confused about anything. But I do such a good job explaining that they never have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. yes. The owners of the, the property? Yes, the owners of the property. Okay, so. Can I tell you to represent them here? Yes. So at least they better. Massachusetts <laughs> is, as I understand it, the only state that has a definition of division of land, which is not yeah, something that happens. Because indeed we are dividing this piece of parts, this piece of land into three separate parcels. Mm -hmm. But by definition, it is not a subdivision. Anywhere else, it would be a subdivision. And Massachusetts is working on doing away with that, I believe, aren't they, Bill? Have you I think they are. Caught wind of that? Yeah, but who knows that will ever happen. Uh, yeah. So the last time there was a major upgrade of the zoning bylaw was 1975. That was an update of 1955. Version. There have been tinkering since yeah, then. Yeah, the Jersey, so I've, I've uh, been to a few county meetings before, and it's kind of a, I do everything by counties. Yeah, I grew up in Morris County. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I work for the Land Conservancy right now, so, but I, I got to work in all different counties. Yeah. 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 So we do have a regional planning authorities, as you saw. But, yeah. uh, they do not have a legal jurisdiction. Right. Uh, they have a statutory role, but the this work is doled out to each community, mm -hmm. and we happen to be a very active community. Uh, others, not so much. Planning boards might be only once a month or every other month. Uh, but we seem to find plenty to do here. All right, next up, 82 Cummins Road, which is the Shala Farm of approximately 200 acres. So what I'm going to do where I've got an A&R, which is four sheets because it's such a big piece of property. Uh, one of the sheets has got to go before you and it's got to go to Amherst. So I've got two places to sign. That's going to be no big deal. Then we're going to talk about a very small subdivision on part of the land that's being sold to 
uh, one of John Kukowski's daughters and her husband. So I will we'll do the A&R first and then I'll talk to you about the other stuff. And what I've tried to do is, because there's four sheets, I want to show you what is coming at you. It's going to be very confusing to try to understand it on all the big plans. Okay, so three parcels. The yellow parcel is the parcel that's being sold to John Kukowski's daughter and her husband. And that's going to be the subject of a very small subdivision discussion after we get through this A&R. The blue parcel is going into APR. And let me backtrack. The yellow parcel, the back section, you can't really see it on here, but you will on a bigger sheet. I've got it divided into two sections. One says, uh, what does it say? No, I don't even remember. You can't read it on here. No. Well, anyhow, there's farmland in the back. Oh, CR. So this farmland is gonna be subject to a CR to the town, conservation restriction. And then the front parcel, parcel, parcel is labeled homestead. So, and again, the blue is going into the APR program and the pink the town of Amherst is the pink is in the town of Amherst. That's APR number two. Uh, the town is going to buy it. Oh. They have a conservation area here oh, and right. here. Because they already have a conservation along the along 116. Yeah. So I think they're going to add it to their conservation area. I don't believe it's going into the APR. It looks like a power line easement going. There are it? multiple easements. Yeah, one's a power line and. Looks like power line. Right? Yeah. Gas line. Is there a gas line on this? I not? don't. Think so. There's the, the, the gas lines for the north. Old A and AT and T easement. That I oh, don't know. Well, the AT and T easement has a gas line running under it. Really? When they put the when they put the uh, underground cable line, really? there's a gas line there too. Run because they, they were able to run the gas line. When we were kids, I remember putting the gas line and they actually run down uh, or across the river. I forget exactly when they put three feet. Angles and half field or for Whateley or whatever that's on the other side of the river. Seven? I'm wondering he came in recently to, I think so, mm -hmm. yeah. Because the AT&T easement is pretty much abandoned. I don't think that's yeah. active anymore. Yeah. Well, it's, Maybe yeah, Berkham got it either or released or moved on his, his subdivisions there. I don't remember exactly what. I think it's gone. I, I mean, they're never going to use it as much as they'd like to think they may. Sure. 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 Question, yeah. sir? No, I, the Kestrel Trust that did a yield of yeah. amount of work to make this deal work. Right. It's been years in the working. It has. Far robust to try to take it apart. Yeah, oh, and, and right. there, there, there's going to be an article, town meeting, regarding CPA funds towards this APR project. So, that's that. If we're good with that, I'll get your pencils ready. Who's the owner of all this? I'm just going to show up. S Z A L A is a uh, family that is um, very active. They, they farmed all of this in North Hadley for years, for years, decades. Where they they used their farm to be right over here at 116. In '59, when 116 went through, they moved the farm homestead over here. But they still they still farmed all this land, but they still farmed it over here instead of over there. So who farms it now? They still farm it? No, yeah, it's farmed. Uh, they rent it out. They rent it out. Yeah. There was a guy from Waitley that was going to buy it last year, and that deal fell through. So I don't know who is going to end up with it now. Well, which Shala controls it now? Ray. 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 And possibly his sister. Uh, yeah. Sister. It's Ray. 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 You do all of them, and yeah. then you just hand it over to me. Mm -hmm. It's like all oh, this mic, this is going to take forever. <laughs> I'll, just, yeah, I'll just pass them down. Okay. This is the frontage? This is the frontage on Cummins. Is this, yeah, this is what, Steve? Are they going to keep the Brian? Some of it. 
So they're going to decide what's what, and that's going to, when I, we talk about the very small subdivision, that's going to impact what they can and can't do. Apparently some of the barns are reasonable and some are not. Okay. Tiger piss <laughs> on, uh, on the mylar. Uh, that I'm not I'm not familiar with that term. Uh, yeah. In the architectural office, when you wanted to strip it off the back of the mylar, oh okay, you used the stuff that smelled awful, and so they nicknamed it. Off to the side for now. Well, yeah, just give them to you. As we go. This could be all one big massive. No, let me. Let me pull them up. First is going to be stored. This is uh, digitized at the Hampshire Registry of Deeds. Uh, yeah, they use the mylar because it reproduces better. Mm -hmm. That's another uh, old habit, too. Yes. It's been in the system for years and years and years. They used to take these plans and put them in cop basically copy books and then keep the originals, but there's too many of them and they don't have a place to store them. So as Bill said, they just digitize it. And if I take this to Northampton, the Hampshire County Registry, they'll keep it. If I take it to Franklin County Registry up in Greenfield, they'll give it back to me. Uh, Hampshire is returning. Are they now? Yeah. Okay. All right, that's one. You're going to have to wait while I scan your plan. <laughs> okay. Close October 3rd ish. Well, the, I think what's happening is Kestrel is going to uh, be the, the middle person, middle group here to, 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 to buy it initially. And then once, the, once the APR has happened, so we'll get that funds back. Now, the APR did not get federal funding. So we only have to have a half of the CPA money came up with the rest. Has the feds come in with the money you know? I'm not aware of what's on that. They're just coming at the end of their fiscal year. Somebody has magic marker. So the... They just extended the debt limit so we can go into debt for them. I won't worry about it. I got nine minutes to do it. Spark really picks up the ward and mm. really just not the tariffs. The firm was the initial thing. The wood cost and yeah. 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 You, you put your title in 
Talk to the page on this one, huh? Can I make a mess of it? No, I put them everywhere because I just I had it. It was a fiasco. So this is a good deal for the town fans. That's a lot of land. It is. And you don't realize it till you go out there. But you know, stand out there at one end, a lot of at the south end, and look, and you go, my God, there could be a hundred houses out here. Did you put it with your throne in it? I don't have one. Um, I'm, I'm not overly keen on all the wonderful new technology. I haven't been there. I'm sure it would come in handy at some point in time, but you know, it's like anything. If you don't have the time to get good at it, you don't have to make a license to run out of high school, but it was just going to Austin. And yeah, there's, and there's uh, some development. Mm -hmm. yeah, some weird mm -hmm. rubber band, not yeah, uh, a good one. one. A good one. There are a multitude more of plant of pick copies on this one because this is the one that's got to go to Amherst, so they have to have paper copies as well. I don't know if they want to see your guys' signatures on it or not, but I'm going to give it to them. We're Hadley. Yes, you are. That's good. Until Wednesday. I don't know. She never said anything about saying okay. You better squeal on him. Just yeah. Yeah. So do you have like a background in geology? On the job screen. I've been doing this since I was 13. My stepfather was the person who started the business that I own. And so I did a lot of, and I have to pass two tests in order to get licensed. So but part of that is on the job training, basically an apprenticeship. So that's how I got to where I am. But it's, it's, it's history, it's detective work. I'm a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a pseudo lawyer. I do everything. He's going to look for the state. Yeah, I think it's just like any other job. You know, you just have to back to the uh, Pictures in town. Are you going to survey them? Or? I have no idea, Joe. That's going to happen with that. I'll give you a few copies. Yep. I imagine they'll just go out and start digging. No. No. Conservation Commission. Oh, jeez. Huh? So, what are they going to do? Make, make them mark the wetlands and come up with a plan? It'll take 50 years to. Get one ditch cleaned out. I just told MS4 requires that they do something. No one knows what it really means. Yeah. VP. You gonna try to find a job around here? 
No? Where? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe go back home for a while just to get my feet more bound. But I don't know, my, my dream job is to plan for the national parks. So if I've been a park ranger for a while. Oh. There's a lot of different careers that I could have, but really like planning. This is what one's planning. This is just speak up here, though. Yeah. Oh, this is this last piece. Getting stuck there. Yeah, the big piece is 143 acres. That's about the last big parcel of development, developable land, isn't it? I would say. I think that's the big tobacco farm. That's APR in the middle. Yeah. What's interesting is you. You go in different parts of the country, and you know I've been going to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, for the past couple of summers. And it's right around there, and it's just endless, endless farm. Well, do a payment or a token to go right deliver too? Yeah. And there's massive and a lot of Amish up there, but there's some big farmlands up there. Well, it's just amazing what we think is big here. You know, a hundred acre farm here is huge. And you go down there and 100 meters is nothing. That's, that's their yard. We're yeah. yard here. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. You look on YouTube and you can only see the curvature of the earth. Up. <laughs> yeah. go. What are the surveys like down there? They're not six four, they're not square they, miles. Yeah, that, Pennsylvania was scripts? part of that. Are we all set? I gotta go. I, I got just to talk about uh, oh. a very small subdivision. So okay. it's if you wanna hear Are we signing? No, no you're, you're signing. done signing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. It should be up on uh, uh, the I'll be able to cat tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be able to watch it on Hadley Media. Yep, you should. One of my previous lives, I was a landman for an oil and gas company. I'm going to get on my own in South Texas. And those, these are all you know, the Spanish land grants. Mm -hmm. All yeah. over the place. It's very interesting. this. Something you need to talk about is down there. Yes. Boys hurt. Boys hurt. And there's there's a strip. It's a 25 foot strip between. This is the slaughterhouse. Yeah, Correct. Right. So between the slaughterhouse and the boys hurt, there's a 25 foot strip in there. It doesn't show up very well on this. It's there. French American. The French is saying for this. I only have one. It would be green wood, right? Because I do. But anyhow. This is well, no. This is what I'm, I'm. This is the the whatever the CR land and the homestead land. What I'm showing is what could be done. There. Okay. I just wanted. So I've got a 50 foot wide road, cul-de-sac. It's a thousand feet long or less. I can't remember what it is, but anyhow, in theory, I can put seven lots in here. What we want to do is one, two, and wave, put everything else in CR. And granted, this part's gonna be in CR. They're gonna want two small lots, they're gonna want bigger lots. No, they, they're, this, they're gonna take this existing house, okay. rehab it okay. for farm labor, and then they're thinking of building their house here. 
Okay. And granted, these they, they, they look small. It's it's thirty five thousand square feet. It's one hundred seventy five feet of frontage. You know, everything fits the way it's supposed to. So, and like I said to you earlier, depending upon how we can agree on this road, if if we agree to do a very small subdivision in the first place, this barn might have to go. That barn probably not. This one is definitely not in good condition. Yeah, I think half of this is good. They said the east half is no good. The west half is good. Okay. So yeah, the workshop used to be in the front half, but that's going to have a concrete floor in it. Okay. This one was just an old hay barn. It's obviously not in the best of condition. Okay. I'm not sure about the back part of that. So the main purpose for talking about this tonight is they are trying to get some kind of federal loan to rehab this house and they need to know that they would be able to move forward. I think it's a good idea. It's a good idea. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. I don't see any problems. I mean, you're getting <coughs> you're getting darn near twenty acres preserved, fifteen, seven, thirteen, eight, fourteen, fifteen, yeah, sixteen. That's 20 you're getting about twenty acres of preserved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two yeah. lots and you for for two lots open yeah. space. Okay. I didn't think it would be a problem, but I don't like to assume. Mm -hmm. Conservation restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind, of just, it kind of scares us by showing us how it could be maxed out, and then says, "But why it says now we're well, I mean, I don't want it. Want it? This guy, oh. this guy, his wife don't complain and be no problem. Yeah, right. I, I don't think they they will, but you never know. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, my regs tell me I'm, I'm supposed to use the most current uh, uh -huh. assessor's records, which may not be uh -huh. accurate. So if you put now or formally, you've got your base oh, covered. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, this, for a long time, this was potentially a exit to the road from Shattuck to go through the whole property and out to so, Cummins Road. Yeah, so I bet. 20 years. Huh. They'd have to build a separate school out there. To, uh, now that's okay. John's other daughter. No, I know that because this is the old. I'm going to big forgive that, us. Okay. House got to torn down. That's a new house. Yeah. Were, there was a house over. It was over here somewhere. And they tore it down and built this. That's the old uh, Sarno farm. Yes. This went with it. I know this was that plan that went with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Do what you want any of this stuff? I don't know. No. Okay. And you want a PDF of all this? Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's it. You said that was going to generate some some discussion. Well, it just. To talk about this, not. Oh. I didn't say it was going to be heated. I, I discussion. thought it was going to be heated discussion the way you were no. talking. Well, no. For, okay, put, up, put the Duke sign here. No. Oh, gee. You know, fine. You know, I don't like doing that. If I don't. If we don't have to. And but I will say this to Mr. Sarzinski, in his quest to make the bylaw appealing to himself. If you have a word like attractive, I would say understand. It. Okay, well, anyhow, if you have a word like attractive, you are qualified to defend what you think is attractive. Right. You are not qualified to defend functional. Oh, okay. Not even functionally attractive? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I wouldn't push it. <laughs> Intellectually, we'll, we'll question that. Yeah, and then, if I may, about this parking stuff, the... I appreciate where your where your concern is about down the road if something if somebody sells and then somebody comes before the board and they say well I want to do this but you say no because there's not enough parking so you're concerned about shutting down on the far end but you're you're not concerned about shutting down on the front end which is basically if it were me and I, I sit here and listen to you guys all the time as you know so if I come to you and I say, this is what I propose, the bylaw allows it, and I'm, I've maxed out, and I can't come back to you and say, now I want to do this, because the rule 
rules are the rules, and I have met them, I cannot expand on it. And I understand, Joe, that people will come back here and say, please, please, please. They always do. But if you, I mean, if you write something in your decision that, like you, you, know, you do with a, a definitive subdivision where this can be no further subdivided, can't you put something in to that effect that this parcel is set up for this parking and this use and you know the potential for it to change is, is non-existent or however you word it. I, I realize that's not the right way to say it, but something along those lines because I would be, if I were Brent Banus, I'd be really upset with the bylaw because it excludes me from doing what I want to do. And my project, I mean, something like he's doing is relatively benign. And, and we agree with that. Yeah. We're not, we're, not, we're not arguing that. Yeah. And that's why we're willing to consider that in the industrial zone. Yeah. To your point of putting words in the bio of a, of a decision, as long as we sit on this board, some of us, we will remember that. Mm -hmm. If they come back, we're all gone sometime in the future, unless this board goes back and looks at that decision, they may not know or won't know that it's limited to this. Because there's so many decisions on, on business property, it's a good idea for what kind of an a good idea of what you're saying, but the enforcement could be well pretty difficult. Has, has any of our decision ever been ta attached or registered in the uh, register of deeds? They are all supposed to be. Yeah, well, but we it could, is we could require them. Yeah, right? Well, they we state law requires that they be recorded, but we don't police it. No. Yes, and uh, a certain number of people forget that they're supposed to do it. Do you police it on the? Uh Definitive subdivisions. So yep. you require it there. It's a lot easier to, def to to police it on a definitive subdivision for the simple reason that we you look for things like that on a definitive subdivision, and because we've had so few of them go by us, we know it's written into the definitive subdivision. It's it and it's recorded usually because you're going to record a definitive subdivision. I notice you're on, hesitating. On, on some site plan approvals, you know, like Bill says, they're recorded, but they can easily be forgotten when you, unless you, they can they can be forgotten. I guess is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. or, or, or omitted or missed. So about six years ago, maybe more, maybe less, um, the registry changed how they were indexing decisions. Okay. So instead of saying planning, Hadley Planning Board, it's now Town Hadley Planning. So with everything computerized, garbage in, garbage out, if you yeah. don't hit the right combination, you can't even find the decision. Um, but even though the, the bylaw says, or not the bylaw, the sta state statute says a special permit has to be recorded in the Registry of Deeds to take effect, mm -hmm. we don't know when the, plan, when the permit leaves here. Right. We don't know if that project is ever going to go forward. Yeah. So we don't make people come back and verify that they have recorded their decision with the Registry of Deeds. Um, we usually rely on the fact that their lender is going, to, or the lender's counsel is going to say, well, where's the decision? Right. And we had some person who was coming in, she had a closing the next day, and she was asking for a certificate of no appeal on the decision, and the town clerk was in Germany. <laughs> so she was asking me if I could certify no appeal. No, that's the town clerk's function. <laughs> well, maybe your, your cool new uh, digital fiche, that would be one of the categories you could Again, have in it. It's not going to, you know, it, it, all the system depends on the applicant triggering it. Yeah. So. They had to know, even though the decision said it doesn't become effective until a copy is filed, they had to know that they had to ask for a certificate of no appeal from the clerk and get that recorded at the register. Or if we were concerned about the uh, carrying out of our, of our orders, we could post, have them post the bond. Uh, that's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a bit inside joke. 
Well, you want to, well, maybe not really right. sure. Not yeah. Said. So, yeah, I mean, there's, if it was, if it was easily traceable for the future, it'd be one thing. Mm -hmm. That's the problem that you have, is like, you know, and we know there have been times when the decisions haven't been filed because we look for them down the road. Well, isn't that, you know, so we, there's, there's no, there's nothing in the, in the registry. Yeah, yeah. I understand and, all that, yeah. Uh, you know, we're not against what Brett wants to do. Well, I know, and I know your hands are tied under the and, current you know, that, But that's why we're also willing to work with him. Now, if Amazon wants to come in and take that building over and they get a huge price for it, that would be a different start. Way too small. I think. I move we adjourn. Way too small for Amazon. <laughs> um, motion to adjourn. Second. Can you get anything else? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you. Thank you, John.